So we're in a bit of a race these days. The race between how quickly can we vaccinate versus how are we going to deal with these variants that are coming along. As we sort of expected uh, a good month ago, the uh, B117 has really taken over in Canada. Right now it's at 60%. So 60% of all the positive cases across Canada are now the B117. That is fast. It's really taking over and it is slightly different from the original strain that we had. There is a little bit more uh, illness that's associated with it. There's a bit more morbidity and mortality that's associated with it. But really, at the end of the day, as these variants, these variants of concern or, or VOCs are coming along, the main thing we can do right now is vaccinate as many people as we can as quickly as we can. So let's talk about the AstraZeneca vaccine, because that's the one that everyone's concerned about. We're hearing about it in the media. We're getting lots of questions. So let's just start with the over 65 issue. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a pause that was placed on the distribution of the vaccine to individuals that were over 65. And that was by recommendation from Health Canada and NACI, the National Advisory Committee on Immunizations. Basically, they just didn't have enough data at the time to look at the effectiveness of the vaccine in the over 65 population. That was just the way the study was designed. So very quickly, we recognized that it was just gonna be a matter of time. And sure enough, within a week or two, there was enough data that was brought forward to say, you know what? Entirely safe and effective in the over 65 population, so go with it. So that was box checked, that was done. So let's just talk about effectiveness for a little bit because that's been in the press a lot as well. 65% give or take effectiveness in the general population in the study that first came out around AstraZeneca, much lower than the Pfizer Moderna at, at in the 90s. So right away there was some question marks uh, about the effectiveness and is, you know, is this a, a vaccine that we should be taking? When they looked at the study, it was done in the UK and at the time they didn't realize it, but there was a lot of variants that were coming out in the UK and that was reducing the effectiveness. So when the uh, secondary study came out in the U.S. population with fewer variants, the effectiveness actually was 79%. So still not 90s, but, but good, 79%. Subsequent to that, there was some more work done and that number was uh, brought down to 76%, but a solid 76%. On top of that, they realized that if they spread the second dose instead of a month, but actually went out to three months for the second dose, that increased the effectiveness significantly. In the UK population, it brought it from the mid 60s right up to the mid 80s. So that was really effective. Um, so that was great. Uh, improving effectiveness uh, in the Canadian population, very similar to the US, very effective. And probably the biggest takeaway is that it's 100% effective in terms of preventing significant severe illness that's gonna land somebody in the hospital. And at the end of the day, that's really what these vaccines are about. So let's talk about blood clots because that's something that's been coming up a lot. So in studies that looked at this very rare type of blood clot that has to do with the venous circulation of the brain, and if you look at that, that that basically was occurring in anywhere from one in a hundred thousand to one in a million people. So that was pre-COVID. We've known that for a long, long time. It's a rare form of uh, blood clot, but it was happening in about that frequency, one in a hundred thousand to one in a million. Now, let's scroll forward. Now we have COVID. One thing we've known for a year now, from the very beginning of, of the pandemic, is that COVID causes blood clots. So for those people that land in hospital, 20 to 30% are gonna have blood clots. That's a huge number. So pretty big deal. If you get COVID, there's a good chance that you're gonna have some sort of a blood clot. And now we have this VIPIT or V-I-P-I-T. And to go through what that actually means, it's vaccine induced, so it's caused by the vaccine. The P stands for prothrombotic, so it means causing blood clots immune, so it has to do with your immune system, and then the T is thrombocytopenia. And thrombocytopenia means low platelets. And platelets you need in your blood to actually cause blood clots. 
So VIPIT, V-I-P-I-T, so this rare situation uh, where we have predominantly under 55 year old and predominantly women more than men are having this unusual blood clot having to do with the venous system of the brain. Now again, what in the, in the pre-COVID world, it is occurring in about one in 100,000 to one in a million. So in the studies that have just been started to look at uh, in different countries, all Europe, uh, really globally, uh, as there's now been a pause, people look because they're seeing that in this population, they're actually having about that rate, one in 100,000 to one in a million. So, in, but it's induced by the vaccine, it appears, but in not a greater rate than what we would expect in the general population pre-COVID. But I think what we're gonna find at the end of the day is that the, the risk of this very rare form of venous thrombosis or blood clot in the brain is actually not going to be a whole lot more than what we have found in the past. So I think that's the big takeaway. Again, is there a risk? There might be a slightly increased risk. But again, if you don't get the vaccine and you do get COVID and you do end up being sick, you've got a 20 to 30 percent chance of having a blood clot as opposed to one in a hundred thousand to one in a million that we're seeing those sort of rates with the vaccine. So the real takeaway is that if you're offered a vaccine and you're in the right age group or the same or the right risk population and you're offered a vaccine, it doesn't matter if it's Pfizer, Moderna or AstraZeneca, just take it. At the end of the day, the risk is really low. These are very safe and we've said 100% effective, all of them, in preventing significant illness. So if you're offered the vaccine, no matter which one it is, take it.